Hello everybody, um, my name is Tomasz Seng, I'm cloud engineer at Virtus Lab. I work with AWS and Azure on my daily basics. I'm maintainer of a Kubernetes distribution for one of our clients. Um, these days I mostly write software in Golang and infrastructure as code in um, Terraform. So let me tell you a story. Uh, there will be a dragons and the epic fights. And uh, once upon a time, there was a Jenkins snowflake and no one knew how it worked. The Jenkins has been deployed manually on a random EC2 instance, but someone, person that was no longer working at the company. Uh, we didn't have full control over it. There, is, there was no Jenkins admin credentials and no SSH keys, SSH keys to the instance. Everyone just crossed their fingers for a continued work. In the meantime, a team of four heroes was sent to kill this beast. Uh, there were various problems to solve. Uh, the Jenkins version was very old and, and as consequence, not secure, um, it was running on top, on the top of infrastructure uh, built by hand. Uh, so it was nearly impossible to recover. Um, the Jenkins home directory and the result, its backup was huge. Uh, the agents didn't automatically scaled to the number of builds. So it was either wasting our resources or not having enough, enough of them. Um, our team of four went to the first battle uh, with the improvised weapons. Uh, it was a massacre. Nothing went uh, according uh, to the plan. Uh, they fell victim to the silver bullet uh, anti-pattern and hype-driven development. Uh, unknown tools and technologies were used and they didn't scale to the complexity uh, of the problem. Um, this solution had less problems. Um, the main gain was that we could recover from an EC2 instance failure. Um, also restarts of the Jenkins were less scary and the version was up to date. Uh, unfortunately, there was uh, still no uh, auto scaling and too many things were done by hand. As a bonus, um, we gained new problems with Terraform state inconsistency and Ansible scripts that were hard to write. So, enter the Kubernetes. Uh, the team of four met a wise druid. Uh, he told them about a magical artifact called Kubernetes. So, they went on a quest. Uh, the challenge was to assemble all the pieces together. Uh, in the era of the Kubernetes 1.4, there was no production ready distribution or installers. Every cluster had to be built and hardened from scratch. I will leave you to your imagination how hard that was. Uh, the main advantages of using container orchestrator with the Jenkins are auto scaling and self healing. Um, the simplest way to deploy anything to, to, to Kubernetes uh, is to apply batch bunch of manifest. As you can see, there is like eight of them, not the end of the world, but not convenient either. So hive driven development tried again with Helm 2.0. Uh, it was supposed to make things easier. Spoiler alert, it didn't. Uh, 
there is a whole article written by my colleague about it. And the title is Thinking Twice Before Using Help 2.0, should be. And so this solution was more complex, but solve uh, more problems. Uh, auto scaling and safe healing were now available. So uh, recovery was almost uh, automatic, yet um, there was a ton of uh, accidental complexity and errors were not clearly visible to the end user. So this made it quite uh, fragile. Uh, gaining a power, powerful weapon as a Kubernetes uh, was not enough. Uh, it required learning uh, how to use um, it properly before it could deal the maximum damage. Um, managing Jenkins um, is complex and automating it makes things 10 times harder. Um, to properly express um, the domain, it felt necessary to use real programming language. Uh, Golang with the operator pattern were uh, the answer. Um, operator uh, is a program that controls whole life cycle of another program. Uh, so in this case, we have pods running in Kubernetes manage through uh, various APIs. Uh, so the operator is Kubernetes native. Uh, it runs a separate software, uh, has application specific knowledge and extends Kubernetes API with a custom resource definition mechanism. And here we have example of a Kafka custom resource definition. Um, you can think of it as a class definition from the object orienting programming. And here, uh, we use the previous definition just as we would use another uh, Kubernetes resource. I uh, can think of it as an object instance from the object uh, oriented programming. Uh, so the control loop of an operator uses Kubernetes resources to check if the observed system is in desired state. So the loop is very simple. Observe, analyze, and act. So let me give you an example. Uh, we have a Kubernetes cluster with Kafka operator running on it. Uh, users creates a Kafka custom resource and the operator control loops get triggered. The operator compares the actual state of the resources with the desired state in from the, uh, from the custom resource. It notices a stateful set is missing. Uh, the stateful set gets deployed and then the Kubernetes stateful set controller creates free Kafka pods. Um, later on, user updates the Kafka custom resource with replica set to two. Then uh, the operator control loops get triggered again. Uh, the operator um, compares the actual state uh, with the desired state. Uh, the difference is the number of replicas. Uh, operator updates the stateful set to adjust the replicas number. Then the Kubernetes stateful set controller deletes one Kafka pod. Uh, operator framework helps to build operator. 
especially the uh, SDK. Uh, with operator SDK, you can bootstrap a new operator even if five minutes. Then uh, you can go straight into design your custom custom result definition. Next steps would be to implement the control loop and start watching uh, some resources. Um, operator SDK encourages a specific deployment flow. So after building the foundation, we start the infinity loop of local tests, end-to-end tests, and publishing. The end result is a set of um, manifests and the container image. Operator framework also provides operator lifecycle manager. Uh, it can be used to deploy operator to clusters at scale. Operator lifecycle manager uses um, cluster catalogs as a source of its operators. Uh, the biggest cluster catalog is the operator hub.io. So if you want to run an application tab of Kubernetes, I would check the site for an operator. Jenkins operator is also available on the operator hub.io. Uh, uh, now is the time for the final battle. Uh, so we, on the one side we have dragons and the other side we have the fellowship of the operator. Uh, as you can see, logo of the Jenkins operator is combined from four different logos. So the blue guy is the goofer, is the mascot of the Golang programming language. The suit comes from the Jenkins, the Kubernetes logo can be seen on the plate, and the green V is like Virtus Lab, my company. And as Alex showed us before, we have a nice t-shirt with the Jenkins operator as well, and I have same with me. Okay, so there are ma many aspects of uh, operating Jenkins. Uh, we want our Jenkins be stable um, and secure. Um, we believe that uh, Kubernetes and operator SDK give us the right tools to properly describe the domain of operating Jenkins automatically. Uh, with the power of full programming language, we can express all of its complexity. Uh, similar to the Kafka example, uh, we have an operator extending Kubernetes API to uh, manage full life cycle of Jenkins. Um, Jenkins operator watches custom and native Kubernetes resources necessary to run Jenkins. Based of those, the operator manages Jenkins master pod and configures the Jenkins itself. Then Jenkins uses Kubernetes plugin to run builds on top of Kubernetes. Um, the Jenkins operator control loop is uh, divided into two phases of operation. The base phase is responsible for creating Jenkins with uh, same defaults. Uh, the user phase is responsible for um, applying all of the user's configuration. Uh, so the base phase ends when we successfully run all base configuration uh, Groovy scripts using uh, Jenkins uh, API. And also we do a lot of more stuff for example, we install plugins and, and so on. Um, the user phase ends when 
all of the user configuration has been applied and backup was restored for the Jenkins job history and artifacts only. Um, so let's go through some Jenkins custom resource examples. Um, here we have a Jenkins custom resource uh, definition. Here we have a simple Jenkins custom resource example. Uh, the underlined part is where the Jenkins master plot definition uh, starts. And here we have the official upstream LTS Jenkins container image set. Um, custom resource is not the only manifest uh, used by the operator. Um, operator uses also native Kubernetes uh, secret and config maps resources to allow for user configuration. Um, we can use them to customize Jenkins configuration with the operator. Uh, here, a user adds a Groovy script to the config map. Uh, in this case, we configure the number of executors on the Jenkins master. Um, actually, this example could be simple, but uh, I wanted to showcase the secret management. Uh, the operator makes Kubernetes secrets available inside Groovy scripts. Uh, users uh, can also use a uh, configuration as code plugin that is installed by default by the operator. Um, similar to the Groovy scripts example, uh, here we have a secret and a config map. Uh, in this case, we set a Jenkins system message that shows up on the Jenkins uh, main UI. So as you can see here, uh, we can also reference Kubernetes secrets values from the configuration as code, code YAML. Um, Jenkins operator uh, by default installs plugins uh, necessary to make it more useful on Kubernetes. Um, those plugins are um, required by the operator to be fully uh, functional. Um, in this case, versions can be adjusted and only explicit versions are allowed, no latest. Uh, the dependent plugins are installed automatically uh, as well. Um, users can also uh, add more plugins uh, in similar way to the base plugins are configured. Um, all the plugins configuration can be adjusted using Groovy scripts and configuration as code YAML uh, showed earlier. Um, one of the default plugins that is available in the job DSL plugins is job DSL plugin. Uh, uh, this example shows how to add a seed job uh, that will add Jenkins jobs from a uh, um, Git repository. Um, there must be uh, a repository URL. So in this case, it's a Git repository, but can be a different version control system there. Um, 
and we have to add path to the to the job DSL scripts uh, called targets. And here is an example of uh, a job DSL scripts. Uh, it creates a pipeline uh, which is stored in Git. Um, again, a Git uh, repository URL uh, is provided here. Um, and the path to the pipeline file inside uh, uh, the, this repository. And here is an uh, example of a Jenkins pipeline uh, with uh, Kubernetes plugin extensions. And here we can reference a container by name uh, in the pipelines. Um, so another feature of the Jenkins operator is the backup and restore of uh, jobs, history, and artifacts. Uh, currently, a local disk backup is supported, but you can create your own provider. Uh, the Jenkins home directory uh, is uh, mounted to the backup container. Uh, we attach uh, a persistent volume to the backup container uh, to store the backups. Uh, it can be some kind of network attached storage or a network attached file system. Uh, Kubernetes PVC API is extendable and many providers are available. And here is an example of PVC that uh, in AWS can be backed by an ABS volume. Um, the backup and restore feature provides two um, extension points. Uh, one for the backup command and the other for the restore command. And then can be run on the same container or two separate containers, depending on the use case you have. And the default image uh, uses just simple bash scripts. It's enough for them. Um, another feature is uh, notifications integration with uh, multiple providers, uh, starting with Kubernetes events, email, Slack, uh, Mailgun and Microsoft Teams. Uh, it will allow for better visibility of the Jenkins state to the users. Um, the most important events will be broadcasted to the configured providers uh, with the configured login uh, levers. Uh, Kubernetes events are standard and cannot be deactivated. Uh, so the available logging levers are info and warning, similarly to the Jenkins events. Uh, I mean Kubernetes events. Uh, for uh, even more information like uh, stack traces, uh, you can enable the variables mode. Okay, so now it's time for a demo. Uh, so Jenkins operator acts uh, really fast. So I've recorded the video for you. 
Um, in this demo, I would like to show all the features that I uh, discussed so far. So first of all, we have to create the Kubernetes uh, namespace called Jenkins. Then we apply the um, the uh, Jenkins custom resource. And as you can see on the screen, after applying uh, the operator I've created a bunch of uh, Kubernetes resources, including pod with Jenkins masters, two services, one for HTTP, one for, for agent, service account, secrets, config maps. Now the Jenkins is uh, starting up and I'm going to copy the um, note port because I run this example uh, locally in Minikube. So with, with uh, so the operator uh, creates uh, uh, Kubernetes secrets and store their um, username and password for the uh, Jenkins operator account and you can extract this uh, password from the secret with this command. Oh, everything is um, documented in our, uh, in our website. So now I'm going to copy this password to use it later. And uh, here we have logs from the, the operator. As you can see, uh, the operator starting uh, watches some um, resources, uh, pod, secret, config map, um, starting control loops, and now it's creating the Jenkins master pod. Generating Jenkins API token for the authorization. And now it's applying the uh, config, the groovy scripts uh, with the same defaults as I said before. Okay, so as you can see, the base configuration phase is complete and the user configuration phase is complete uh, because uh, I didn't specify any uh, custom uh, things, so it took the same uh, time as the base. So when you see this in logs, that means your Jenkins is fully, fully operational and you can log to the Jenkins. So I'm, I'm using the password uh, extracted from the secret, secrets uh, area. Um, and as you can see, there is no warnings. There is no warnings on the uh, plugins. So our plugins are up to date. And now I'm going to uh, configure something manually because the Jenkins um, uh, created by the operator uh, is immutable. What does it mean? Uh, for example, if I change something manually like this, so I, I now I'm changing the master executors to one. Uh, if I will delete this pod, this change will vanish. I, I will see you. Uh, 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 I will show you in a second. So for example, we can also create a um, a job and also this job uh, will uh, vanish after the uh, restart the Jenkins pod. So now I'm going to uh, delete this uh, Jenkins master pod. And
and as you can see, another pod uh, is running. So I cut the video to uh, speed up the uh, the presentation. And as you can see, again, uh, the operator applies the base uh, configuration with Groovy scripts. And user phase is complete. So Jenkins, uh, you can log into the Jenkins. So let's refresh the uh, website. And as you can see, there is no uh, uh, job which I create previously. And there, the queue, uh, the build executors is set to zero. So uh, as I said before, uh, the, those changes were vanished because we don't uh, persist this configuration. Everything should be put um, uh, in the Jenkins CR, basically. Uh, so now I'm going to apply the, um, and I will modify the Jenkins custom resource with all the stuff I, I mentioned previously. So as you can see, I configured the notification for the uh, Slack and the operator um, uh, gives me information that uh, something has changed in the configuration. So it's going to restart the Jenkins master pod. So now it's creating the uh, Jenkins master pod. As you can see, base configuration is complete. I'm waiting for the user configuration to complete. Okay, so so it's complete. We can log into the Jenkins. We use the same credential as before, and as you can see, the scheme the skin uh, ha has changed. Uh, we have uh, we set the system. Uh, message from the configuration as code plugin. We set the uh, master executors from the Groovy scripts and we set the seed job, which uh, creates that creates uh, three different uh, jobs. So to showcase the backup and restores feature, I'm going to run this uh, build with the Kubernetes plugin. So uh, it runs the uh, another pod in the same uh, namespace as the Jenkins, and it connects the to the Jenkins as uh, an agent. How, that's how uh, the uh, Jenkins uh, Kubernetes plugin works. So the plugin waiting for uh, for the pod. We can test is running or not. As you can see, there is um, K8 as agent pod. And now it's terminating because uh, I said only echo hello world there. So. We run this uh, job successfully and we have one uh, build in this job. So now I'm going to uh, delete the uh, Jenkins master pod and after uh, recreate the Jenkins master pod, this uh, job history should be persisted because we, co we configured the backup and restore uh, feature. Now we're waiting for the user phase to complete. It's complete. And uh, we're going to see if the there there will be one build in this job. And again, see jobs get triggered to, to create the jobs. And as you can see, 
we have one build stored successfully uh, in this job. Um, and now I'm going to edit the uh, uh, the uh, config map uh, with the uh, Groovy scripts and I want to change the amount of master executors. For example, I can change to uh, something which is not, uh, uh, should be not, not done. And so, as you can see, uh, we got a notification uh, from the Jenkins operator in the, in the, in the Slack that uh, it tried to run uh, this uh, Groovy script and it's encourages some error. And you can see um, stack trace because we set the variables mode uh, for the notification feature. So I can see what is wrong with my Groovy scripts which configure the Jenkins. So uh, this, this is very nice because taking the, um, the change almost instantly. Now I'm uh, editing the uh, Jenkins uh, custom resource and this uh, character is not allowed. So when I save this, I get another notification that the validation failed and uh, this plugin is not, uh, uh, it's, 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 the version is not uh, good for, for the Jenkins. Okay, um, so uh, now I'm going to delete the Jenkins custom resource. And because we set um, uh, owner uh, for all resources created by this uh, uh, Jenkins custom resource. So after delay deleting um, the Jenkins custom resource, all related uh, resources will be deleted as well. And that's all for my demo. Um, now I want to show you the, uh, the, the GitHub repository. As I said, uh, Oleg uh, earlier, uh, we have uh, a community, so you can join our uh, Slack. Uh, feel free to just come and say hi and okay this project is, is bad or, or great so it's up to you so also we have a community call of every thursday on google meet so uh, you can uh, talk to us um, in person ask some questions maybe uh, you have uh, basically we can gather some feedback from you to to make this uh, better for the other users uh, we also in the GitHub have a project, so you can sh see what's going on in the project, what's the project in progress, um, ready to release, and what is close. Maybe we can uh, change the priority of the issues. So if you have some issues, please um, uh, please uh, fill one, so we we can have discussion for it. Uh, also. We have a website for the Jenkins operator. We have nice documentation there. If you see some um, gaps, you can just uh, fill the issue. We'll try to, to make this uh, better. And nice uh, thing you can, is the schema for the Jenkins CR. So if you, if you have problems with the, a validation you don't know which is possible or not you can uh, just uh, look at the, uh, click on the link and see uh, okay so the backup looks like this and what the, the fields I need to uh, field basically okay so that's uh, all for me and I'm waiting for the questions for from you guys
Thanks, Tomas, uh, for the presentation. Uh, for participants, um, again, please share your feedback um, in the Google form. Um, uh, we will really appreciate that because it will help us to improve uh, the meetups and we will also uh, share feedback with Tomas. We will also appreciate that. And uh, let's go through some questions. Um, we answered some asynchronously, but we still have uh, some on the list. So, um, uh, the first question is, uh, why do you use a single uh, CRD type with different fields in the specification instead of different CRDs uh, like Jenkins Master, Jenkins Plugin, etc.? Uh, yes, so um, uh, I forgot about this. Uh, one slide there. Roadmap. Um, yes, so... Um, in our roadmap, we want to first of all uh, focus on the um, refactoring and, and, and improvements. Uh, refactoring means that we want to split the user phase uh, into a uh, few uh, custom resource definition um, as the user uh, asked this. So this will be done in the near future because uh, we face that the Jenkins custom resource now is huge. We want to uh, make it late, um, light, basically. Um, yeah, so this is the answer. We, we, we will do that. Okay. Thank you. Another question is, uh, do you consider using uh, Istio in a uh, Jenkins Kubernetes separator? Yes, yeah, so... Um, uh, because we use the pod for uh, deploying Jenkins master. So we act like the controller for it. Uh, and um, this is what this is, it, it, it would, uh, um, how to put it. So um, it don't work as we expect. So um, we want to move this to the uh, Kubernetes deployment. Uh, and with deployment, we uh, won't have problems with uh, Kubernetes admission controllers, which modifies uh, the pods. For example, inject some uh, site container like uh, Istio uh, do. So after refactoring and moving from pod to deployment, uh, you will able to use the Jenkins uh, with the operator and uh, is still. Thank you, and we're coming forward to our exchange. So the next question, uh, you currently rate uh, the capability maturity level um, at basic, um, according to operator HAPIO. Do you plan to target level three or higher? Um, yes, so uh, on my list, uh, I have to deploy the new version uh, 1.4.0, uh, which have more this uh, this uh, cap capabilities. Uh, for example, uh, I don't remember everything uh, from the list, but uh, uh, this one from uh, uh, seamless upgrades. So uh, it's uh, in 0 0.4.0 uh, is uh, available. So we will update this when we uh, will uh, update the uh, operator uh, hub.io catalog for the Jenkins operator. Thank you. Um, so the next uh, question is, uh, could uh, the operator configure uh, Jenkins uh, authorization and authentication, for example, DAP SSO and other methods? Yes, uh, it's possible because uh, you can configure the Jenkins through the Groovy scripts. And in this Groovy scripts, you can configure um, this authentication authorization. Uh, also with the configuration as code, uh, but there is one um, one thing you have to um, be um, uh, uh, be careful because the Jenkins operator also uh, needs to 
apply this configuration for the Jenkins API. So you have to give uh, to the Jenkins operator account admin permission uh, in this, uh, for example, LDAP or or OAuth. It is up to you. What, what do you what do you want to use to to be able to apply those configuration for you? Without that, uh, the operator won't be able to uh, configure your Jenkins. In principle, uh, there is a way to configure that uh, even if you use LDAP account. Uh, so one of uh, the topics we consider maybe for the next week is to have a meeting between uh, Kubernetes Jenkins operator developers and uh, Jenkins developers so that we could uh, see problems and uh, discuss how we could address them. Uh, stay yes. tuned for that. So. I, I want to add one, one mm -hmm. to this because um, we also uh, talk about the authorization method for the Jenkins operator to the Jenkins. And I think uh, we have to extend this model because now we have two strategies and we have to add more to, um, to, um, to, to basically user can define all this uh, authorization and authentication mechanism uh, um, delivered by the plugins in the Jenkins. So it, it will be improved in the future mm -hmm. as well. Thank you. Uh, so the next question, why is it better to use operator and not Helm chart with backups and uh, uh, some other things uh, you have in the operator? Uh, what are the real advantages? Okay, so with the Helm chart, you uh, have no guarantee what the status of the, your Jenkins is because you just deploy and you don't know what's going on. If the backup has been restored successfully or uh, there is some problems with uh, scaling or scaling down. So you don't know if your Jenkins is running or not, but with the operator, um, uh, it keeps every configuration, the Jenkins um, running all the time. So it's checking, okay, this is okay, check and move to another uh, list, have to, have to check. So with the Jenkins, you have more, uh, you, you can be more, um, con um, so you can you can uh, know that your Jenkins is running basically. So if the if, if, if something is going wrong, the Jenkins operator can uh, uh, send a notification to you that okay something is wrong. I can uh, do uh, something. So you have to check this. But but with the hand chart, you don't know what the status of the Jenkins is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we have a few questions left uh, and if somebody wants to ask more questions, please submit them. So uh, there is a, always a limit on the agents that can be used with a Jenkins master. Does it help in scaling uh, Jenkins master as well? Uh, so um, current, so we um, set the Jenkins master executors to zero for the security reasons. So everything should be run as the uh, Kubernetes plugin as a separate pod under the need. Uh, um, so, um, so that, 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 that's the answer. Plus we thought about uh, something like um, um, managing agents uh, by the operator and connect them to the Jenkins, uh, which is configured by, by the operator. So, um, so for example, we have some kinds of use case. So we have uh, um, for Scala SBT and it has to be um, run for some uh, part of time uh, to, to, to be, uh, uh, to, to, to fast compile things. And uh, with the Kubernetes plugin, uh, you, you run the uh, agent as you run the build and you don't have this opportunity. So we thought about some kind of static engine, but this is not easy, but it do, it's doable 
to you in operator. So for example, we can uh, extend and create separate custom resource definition for managing, managing the uh, Jenkins agents, basically. Thank you. And the uh, second similar question is, uh, is it possible to have multiple Jenkins masters deployed in the cl cluster? Um, um, it's possible, uh, but uh, it's not possible to uh, run two uh, Jenkins master for from the one Jenkins custom resource. So um, there is how, how the Jenkins works. So you have one master and everything is done by inside and uh, making this high availability, for example, spin two of them, it's not easy. So we, 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 we have talks about it, but um, basically it's not uh, easy to, to do that basically. If we, if we, uh, we will know how to do that, we for sure will implement this to make the Jenkins uh, 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 be more uh, um, available for the users. Thank you. So there is other question, which is rather related uh, to governance. Uh, just a second to find it. So do you plan to join CNCF and make this operator official? Uh, to be honest, I, I, I didn't thought about it. Uh, so uh, this is my, my, my answer. I, I, I don't know if how, how the process is and what we can um, gain what we have to do to, to, to join the C and CF. There is, I, I know there is some, uh, you have to, for example, there is some checklist and you have to uh, um, make all this, um, um, all these things from the list before you can join with this project. Yeah. So just to clarify the current state from the Jenkins governance standpoint, Jenkins project itself is a part of continuous delivery foundation and Continuous Delivery Foundation is also a part of Linux Foundation. So basically we have a lot of communications with CNCF, but Jenkins itself, um, it's in another foundation. Um, regarding Jenkins Kubernetes Operator, uh, right now it's formally donated to the Jenkins project, but in the future its evolution may really depend on how project uh, goes forward. For example, Jenkins X also started as a part of Jenkins project, but then it evolved to a separate project. Something like that may also happen with uh, Jenkins Kubernetes operator. Let's see. Okay, and uh, the last question, uh, which is uh, rather related to general use uh, in Kubernetes. Uh, is uh, how do you build uh, Docker images using Jenkins and Kubernetes? Uh, so as you can see in the presentation, I use the uh, the official Jenkins image, LTS. So we um, don't build some custom uh, Docker image. I know there is some practice with uh, bake some plugins in, in the Docker image. So it's possible from in the, in the operator but uh, it's not um, mm, so basically it's up to the user how, how to how to uh, how to want to do that basically so um, we from our perspective we have to do everything that we uh, put in the Jenkins CR so for example install plugins and, and whatnot uh, so it's up to you what do you want to use so uh, uh, for the OpenShift, uh, uh, they have a separate Docker image uh, with some baked plugins, and it's also run with the Jenkins operator. Thank you. Um, 
the next question is, is it possible to run two completely different masters uh, using uh, Jenkins Kubernetes separator? Yes, of course. Uh, you can have multiple instances of the Jenkins uh, as you have multiple instances of the Jenkins CR. Um, so one uh, good practice we learned that uh, it's good to have one operator for uh, one Jenkins because in the operator you have uh, a lot of uh, information in the logs or the notifications. So it's uh, make the work easier when you have one operator and one Jenkins. But for example, if you have another namespace, you can deploy another operator with another Jenkins. So it, it would work basically. Thank you. And the last question we have in the list. Uh, so the manifest uh, file says uh, API version Jenkins IO slash v1 alpha 2. Uh, does it mean that the Jenkins separator is an alpha stage and not recommended for production use? Um, this v1 alpha 2, um, it's, um, I know it's maybe can be confusing for the users, but uh, changing version for the custom resource definition is uh, painful in the Kubernetes because uh, you have to somehow translate one version to another. So the version one supports V1 alpha two and version two supports V1 alpha three or whatnot. And you somehow you have to, or manually change the, um, the, the Jenkins custom resource. And we for now don't have a tool which will automatically detect that, uh, for example, we run the Jenkins operator version two and uh, translate from V1 alpha two to V alpha three. But if we will get this, uh, this kind of tool, for sure, uh, we will uh, change. So we will change the V alpha two when we change the uh, uh, Jenkins customer resource API. And this uh, occurs only one uh, in the past. So we have to change some map from the list and this is breaking change. So we have to introduce the new version. And it doesn't mean that it's not production ready. Uh, our customer runs this uh, in the production successfully. So uh, don't look at it. Uh, thank you for the answers. Uh, it was uh, the last uh, question um, in our queue. So Thomas, would you like to add something uh, before we close? Uh, so, um, uh, I'm really uh, happy if you want to write some Golang code and help us to 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 build the J Jenkins Kubernetes operator. Uh, have to have some fun, learn new language prog programming. Um, so if you have some time, uh, you can uh, raise issues, make some pull requests. We have um, calls so. Uh, I want this project to be more um, uh, driven by the uh, by the users. So uh, I don't want that that's this project for for uh, from one person, but I want to uh, be driven by the uh, by the users basically. So if you want, if you have some spare times, and uh, please make some pull requests or uh, so. It will be fun. I, I really I really like the Golang language programming. Um, it's very nice to me. So that's that's all for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks so much to the presentation and uh, thanks uh, to all who asked questions uh, during this meetup. Um, uh, and uh, looking forward to seeing the Jenkins community. Uh, just a quick heads up. Uh, we have a next meetup uh, on Friday. 
So Mark, you will be talking about securing your Jenkins CICD container pipeline with Anchor. So Mark, would you like uh, to quickly introduce it before we close? Yes, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, we will be demoing uh, the Jenkins uh, pipeline plug, uh, excuse me. We will be demoing the Anchor Scanning Jenkins plugin, which will allow you to scan uh, items within your job, items being Docker containers, and then get alerting for that. And it's very inline. And it's a really awesome tool to use for DevSecOps. And that's what I'll be presenting. Look forward to seeing everybody. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. And again, thanks everybody who attended this meetup. Uh, we will process the video and publish it uh, tonight. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, please join uh, the Slack channel shared by Tomas. And we will be happy to answer questions and continue the discussion there. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you.